Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJerubbench.com. Welcome to 2020. I'd like to thank all of you first by saying that I appreciate all the view support that I've gotten and all of you have helped make my channel grow. You don't know how much I appreciate it, guys. Today we're going to work on blender and bending objects. It's a fun way to create jewelry. So let's get started. Okay guys, so what I wanna do now is I want to show you how we go about doing this with, I'm gonna turn on my screencast keys here so we can see what we're doing here. And I want to go ahead and add in a cylinder. So we're gonna go in now and hit Shift A. We're gonna add in a cylinder. I'm gonna size this down just a little bit. I'm gonna rotate this on the Y axis by hitting the R, then the Y, and then 90 to rotate at 90 degrees. Press Enter. Then I'm gonna size this along the X axis. I'm gonna zoom out here first. S, X, and then we're going to size it about like that. If I press the T, T key, Tab key, we go into the Edit mode, and you can see um, to bend an object, we need to be in the Edit mode. First thing I'd like to do is be in one of the front or side views. So using the one key on my keypad, on my numeric keypad, I go into the front view and the bend key or the bend tool in Blender is the shift W key. So if I move my cursor, my cursor is right here in the middle. If I move my mouse cursor anywhere to the side, like right here, I press shift W, I should be able to bend it. Now you can see what's happening here is I'm bending the whole piece but I'm not bending the edges. It's kind of screwed up. So I'm gonna press the right mouse button and cancel this. Now what I wanna do is I want to add in uh, vertices or, or uh, points in here that I can bend along. So to do that, I'm gonna press the Control R and then I'm gonna type in 50, press Enter and then Enter again and you can see now on my edge loops, I have 50 edge loops plus the two in the on the ends. I'm gonna press A to select all. I'm gonna hit one on my numeric key, keypad and now I'm in front view. Now you can see that wherever I move my mouse cursor from the center point, from where the center cursor is, I can bend along that line. So for instance, if I put my cursor right here about in the middle of this half of the right half of the cylinder and press Shift W, now I can move the object, I can bend it any way I want. And you can see if I move out, I bend it further along the line. If I move it closer towards the center, I make a sharper bend. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can do that as much as you want. To cancel, if you make a mistake, just press the right mouse button or the Command Z and that'll bring it back. So that's how you bend an object, and it's pretty, pretty simple to do. Now, I'm gonna hit the tab key again, go into object mode, I'm gonna rotate this a little bit, and I'm gonna size this, just kind of shrink it along the Y axis. So I'm gonna press S and Y, and I'm gonna make this a little bit narrower. And then I'm gonna go back into front view mode by pressing the one on the keypad. You can also go into side mode by pressing the three. I like to work in front. And I'm gonna press tab again. I've got everything highlighted. And I'm going to move my cursor right over here again to the center of the right side. Press Shift W and now I get that line in the middle and that line is my bend parameter. So I'm going to bend that up just like this. And I'm going to left click to mark the point I want. I'm going to press Tab to go back into object mode. And now you can see by rotating it around you can see what our object looks like. Why is this handy? Well, this is handy for a couple of reasons because, if, for instance, if I want to make a prong or a custom-made head for a stone, this is how I would do it. So we're actually going to do that now. I'm going to get rid of this object and press X to delete it. I am going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit Shift A. We're going to add in another cylinder. And I'm going to give this some 96 vertices. 96, yeah, 93 is good enough. And now I'm gonna size this down, and I'm gonna size this along the Z axis by pressing S, Z, and then scrolling up. 
I'm going to enter in front view again by pressing the one on my keypad. I'm going to zoom out just to get myself centered in here. And go back to front view. I'm going to enter tab or I'm going to hit the tab key to enter edit mode. Press control R and I am going to give this 50 more edge loops by pressing 5-0 on your keypad. Press enter again twice and then select all. With all of that selected, and I'm going to size this down just a little bit here, and we're going to size it along the z-axis, sz. This is the parameter for which I'm going to start with a generic prong. And it works pretty cool this way. So how I want this to look is I need four of these to be in the shape of a head. And I want that head to be kind of a simple design. Um, and we're just going to keep it as a circle. And I am going to add in a modifier to this so that I give myself an X and a Y mirroring support on this. So I'm going to come over to modifiers with my cylinder selected. I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. I'm going to press, well, X is already selected, so we'll press Y. I'm going to come back into edit mode by pressing tab. And now go back in the front view. I am going to press, I'm going to move my cursor, let's see, I'm going to put my cursor right here. So Shift S and uh, selection of cursor, cursor to world, cursor to selected. So now I've moved my cursor here. I'm going to press A to select all. I'm going to move my mouse cursor up to this point and press Shift W and I'm going to bend that along that line just like that. And I'm going to come in here just about a little more of an angle. Now, I want to make this a little sharper on the upswing to hold my stone. So I'm going to put my mouse cursor here. I am going to press Shift S. And then we're going to put cursor to selected. And you can see it puts the cursor approximately there. I'm going to move my mouse cursor up towards the end and press Shift W. And then I'm going to bend that along like that. And you can see I can, bind, I can bend it any way I want. I'm not really happy with that because you can see it's kind of narrow. But you're getting the point. I'm going to go back into object mode by pressing the tab key. And we're going to take a look at this. And you can see we've basically just got a... Uh, I'm going to turn off the Y mirror. And you can see we've just basically got a... Uh, a Y shape for our prongs. Now the really cool part about this is I'm just doing this for a round prong and you can play around with it as much as you want. Um, what I'm going to do now is just make a couple more changes to it. I'm going to go back into front view. I'm going to go into edit mode and you can see the only one that we can edit is our original object. Our mirrored object is gray shaded so we can't make any changes to that. I'm going to put my mouse cursor here and click right there. I'm going to press Shift S and I'm going to hold that and select cursor to select it. This puts my cursor right about here and then I'm going to press A again to select all my vertices. I'm going to press Shift W. And now you can see I can make a slightly larger bend on this. I'm also going to leave my cursor there. I'm going to move my mouse over here and press Shift W. And now you can see I can make changes this way also. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to press the right mouse button and cancel that. So to make a sharper bend here, I'm going to move my cursor right about here and press the left mouse button. Oops. Let's go back in the front view. I am going to select all. Oops. Shift S cursor to selected, press 1, A for all, shift W to bend, and I'm going to make my object just a little bit on the wider side, just like that. So now I've got this Y-shaped tulip. Let's go back into object mode by pressing the tab key. You can see I've got this really cool object here. And now what I want to do is make sure I have four prongs with this. So to do this, I'm actually going to take this object. We're going to edit it one more time. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to curve or round off the top of this prong. Pretty simple. So I want to come over here and select my faces tool. I'm going to select this face. 
I am going to press X and delete the face. Then I'll come over and select my edge tool. We're going to zoom into this area here, right there. And I want to select the parameter of the upper circle. So I am going to press and hold the shift key and select one of the edge loops. You can barely see it there. I'm going to press the alt key and the shift key together and I'll press another one. And now you can see I've selected the entire ring. Now this is where I'm just going to round this up a little bit. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to extrude along the Z axis. So press the Z key and I'm going to bring that up. And then I'm going to press S to size that down a little bit. We're going to extrude that one more time, move it along the Z axis again. We're going to size that a little bit more. And you can see I'm kind of giving that upper part of the prong just a little bit of a curvature um, so that it's not some flat service, service, surface. I'm going to do that one more time. E to extrude. Z will go up a little bit. And I'm going to size just like that. Now once I've got that like this, I'm going to press the F key to close that and make a face. Hit the tab key and now you can see I have this unique curve to the top of it. And because we have the mirror tool on and we're married along the X axis, it's done both sides of the prong. So how do I get this duplicated? Oh, let's do this tab, apply. Now you can see we've got this whole object here. We can modify any of it, which we don't want to do. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I want to duplicate this. So I'm going to select the object, my Y-shaped heads, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, press Enter, and then I'm going to press RZ90. And I've basically created a four prong head with a round end. Now, I am going to press the first object, hold the shift key down, press the second object. I'm going to come over to my, I believe it's my edit tab here, select Boolean tools and then union. And what I'm going to do is basically make this one whole object. And this is my round head. And I used the bend tool to do that. So go ahead and practice with that. Um, the shift W is for bending, but remember you can only use shift W uh, to bend an object that is in edit mode and it must have multiple edge loops. You can have as few as two edge loops um, and still bend an object. The more edge loops you have in an object, the better you can form it. So I usually start with about 50 and sometimes I'll go up to 100 depending on the uh, detail of the model that I want. I hope that helps you guys. I hope you like this. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you can share any of my videos on social media, the more sharing you guys do, the better my channel does. I appreciate everything you do. Um, my library is coming out this month, so be looking for that. Patreon users will be getting the library um, for free. And people who are not Patreon supporters can buy the 3D Jewelry bl Blender library on my website and i'll show you how to do that probably by the middle or end of this month thanks for watching guys take care and have a great day welcome to 2020Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, 
hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care, guys. Happy watchmaking and jewelry making.